So I just got back from a strong fit course in Minneapolis. This course was all about movement. There's a lot of movement happening over there. I wanted to take this course because, well, the way you move is either going to decide if you have problems or if you are going to be a rock star. I know firsthand the consequences of not moving well. For me, that was unsightly asymmetries, pain, like knee pain, back spasms, you name it, uh, lack of mobility, just constant stagnation with my training. I realize the chances of somebody being just completely balanced and perfect and moving awesome is pretty much slim. So that's why I feel that this is something that everybody needs to be paying attention to because we were not born with instruction manuals. There was one sentence that coach Julian kept saying over and over. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. So for example, somebody could be doing a deadlift and it can appear to look like they're doing it properly and yet they could be having back pain. What gives? Well, it's not about what you do, it's about how you do it. So if you're executing the deadlift with incorrect torque, well then yeah, you're going to be moving with incorrect muscles and that can lead to pain, dysfunction, imbalances, blah, blah, blah. But enough with the chit chat. Let's just get into the vlog so that you can start to rethink movement. What is strong fit? It's a system of principles created by Julien Pinot. It teaches you proper movement mechanics and it teaches you how to identify, address, and ameliorate imbalances, weaknesses, and deficiencies. And you can see it's based on strongman style training. And if you're a chick, you're probably freaking out already. I relate. I felt the same way at first. You know, strongman training isn't that for dudes. Well, now I'm obsessed with strongman training because it improved my quality of life. This style of training targets all planes of movement. Most exercise programs don't do that, and that's what leads to imbalances and injuries. So this is Coach Richard, and he's teaching me to engage my external obliques when I deadlift so that it's a pure hinge and I don't end up jacking up my erectors, your low back muscles. Remember what was said at the beginning of the video, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So if you engage the wrong muscles during the deadlift, then you can end up really hurting your back. So on the first day we worked a lot on deadlifts. This is the stiff leg deficit deadlift. It's a deficit because I'm standing on the 45 pound plate. Notice I'm in my cute socks there. So I have a snatch grip, the wide grip, because that helps to activate the pecs. So we're building the hinge, doing the concentric part. And you can see there's more time under tension. This is no longer a deficit. And the key thing I'm trying to think of here is to just relax and engage my external obliques. Now, what if you don't have barbells at home? No problem. You can also deadlift using the sandbag and you just lap it, toss it down and repeat. After we wrapped up for the day, I stayed behind to do a workout. Thank you, Tyler, for letting me train at CrossFit 1080 all week. So the strong fit system is based off of two torque chains, the internal and external torque chain. So I kicked off my workout with the external torque chain because this helped to get me fired up and ready for the rest of my workout. So this consisted of a couplet of five wide grip pull-ups into five ab wheel rollouts. And I did that five times. Then I moved on to an internal torque workout and I wanted to do this because it was closer to my bedtime and I didn't want to be wired from the other workout. So this will help me fall asleep at night. So I did Z press to failure immediately followed by sandbag squats to failure. And I repeated that for two sets. Then I finished up with a 400 meter sandbag carry with the 80 pound sandbag. And when I came back inside, Eddie, who was also taking the course with me, showed me a cool trick. Watch.
Day two was pressing day. We kicked off with shoulder openers. The purpose of these is for better mobility in the overhead position. For example, when you're doing overhead presses or snatches. I do the shoulder openers every day because my left shoulder mobility is not as good as the right side. Why did this happen to me? Well, it was because of the deleterious postures I was adopting while practicing dentistry. I am right-handed, so the left arm is for retracting the patient's tongue out of the way. So, unfortunately, I did that incorrectly. I ended up using my upper traps on the left side instead of using the correct muscles, which would have been the lats, teres major, pec major, and lower traps. So because the upper traps were so bossy and stealing the limelight, the correct muscles became very weak. Now, the problem with being upper trap dominant is that it can lead to shoulder and neck pain. It's clearly restricted my range of motion on that side. When I'm doing this, I'm thinking of having my external obliques engaged and my pecs engaged. And being very careful not to let the left shoulder shrug up towards my ear. Z press. Now I like to pretend I'm doing a lat pull down on the way down so that I'm loading my lats eccentrically. Now keep an eye on my left shoulder because we know I have a history of being upper trap dominant which means you would see it shrugging. Let me show you what that would look like. Aha! So that's what you don't want to see on the left side. I struggled with this one because I didn't have a mirror for biofeedback. So I'd recommend a mirror because not everybody has Julian Pinot running over to you to position you correctly. Now this exercise, holy molar, did I ever feel this in the most inferior aspect of my lats. I don't think I've ever felt that portion of my lats before in my entire life. And the sensation was hellacious. Now Richard's going to show you an even more vicious version. Julian took us outside for a seven minute EMOM. Every minute on the minute, we did five sandbag tosses and five broad jumps. It might look easy, but it was not easy at all. In fact, you can hear us grunting. It's a well-known fact that gruntifical force does help the situation. So this is targeting external torque. Immediately after that, Julien brought us inside for an internal torque workout. We did two rounds to failure of bench press. Notice that the grips were varied from narrow to middle to wide, six reps apiece until you go to failure. Immediately followed by rope pull. Important for me because we know that I need to really concentrate on my pecs, Terry's major, and I'm also thinking of keeping my external obliques engaged. The whole point of this workout was to get us into a flow state. We were feeling mellow, we had more chill music on, and then we did this again one more time before moving along to another external torque workout to fire us up because we had lectures for the rest of the day and we didn't want to fall asleep in the lectures. So we did a five minute EMOM of five rear delt flies, and you'll notice heavy, like those are 25 pounds, immediately into bicep curls targeting the external torque chain. Notice the vibe to this workout is completely different than the internal torque one. The internal torque one was mellow. This one you can see we're more aggressive. We're using heavier weights. We're using body English. Day three was squat day, but first I want to show you something super cool. So how would you do rope pulls at home if you have a home gym? Well, there's this really cool contraption called the Exergenie. 
and you can see you can attach a harness to it or you can attach a rope to it. Oh, that's pretty cool. I hate the Jefferson squat opener. Probably because I really suck at external torque. But women are supposed to be very good at external torque. I think I'm an outlier because I had pigeon toes for 40 years of my life. It wasn't until I started doing the strong fit training that I'm actually starting to walk with my feet pointing straight ahead. So that's good news. But the reality is that I need to improve my external torque. Now the Jefferson squat opener is not a squat exercise. It's an opener to teach you external torque. Obviously exactly what I need. So it tests the glute med and it tests one leg at a time. For me, I find all the openers very challenging. There is a steep learning curve for me. And if you're like me and you have mobility restrictions and some weaknesses, then prepare for an odyssey. The Anderson squat using a yoke. So I'm thinking of getting a yoke for my living room, thinking about it. So this is targeting the squat above parallel, concentric, very explosive. And then it's a hinge eccentric on the way down and you reset between reps. It's all just squeezing the ass through, making sure that it's all external torque. Sounds good. So same concept, working the squat above parallel. So this is a squat, it's not a hinge. So you're not deadlifting the bar up. Take a look again. External torque on the concentric. So after we wrapped up for the day, I did my own workout, starting with my external oblique openers. If you have strong and mobile external obliques, you will be a beast. The external obliques are the secret of life. Then I did the pull downs to target my pecs and Terry's major. We already discussed how the left side is delinquent for me. So I'm on a mission to fix that. I just ordered that device for my home gym. And then I did 100 unbroken double unders. And you will notice that that workout is internal torque. Also, if you have strong external obliques, you won't pee your pants when you jump rope. And then I did some overhead pressing with the sandbags along with the sandbag squats. And you'll notice I'm doing all internal torque. It's you know closer to bedtime and I want to be able to fall asleep. And then we went to dinner, all the coaches, that's me. Day four. This is the croc row and on the concentric we are targeting the external torque chain, so the lats. We're thinking too much. The bottom position is a hit and we come up, we switch to external torque and we pull right torque. This is the Yates row named after Dorian Yates. I actually did his program for years when I was a fitness model. So I have a supinated grip and I am bringing it to the hips, external torque. Then we did a seven minute EMOM external torque. So it was 110 pounds for the Yates rows and 25 pounds for the flies. I'm putting these two on the ground. What, how am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do this or am I gonna do that? So, okay, so there is no squatting. Yeah, so this is the way I've been doing them, and I feel like that's probably why I've been using the right tool the wrong way. Yeah. Because I've been basically focusing on being here yeah. the whole time. Yeah, you know what I mean? We are yeah. no. like that. Mm -hmm. no, so go here, internal torque, and just go with it. Go toward your VMO. There we go. What's wrong with that? Oh, yeah. Does it, it feel better? Sense, but yeah. the point is, there is no sweat. Yeah. So you just came up with a movement. Yeah. Okay, so which movement would fit the movement better? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. more toward the hinge, so yeah. we move toward the hinge. Then at the end of the day, I did my own workout. And since I know that my Terry's major and pec major suck on the left, I'm like, all right, let's have at it. So I did the bench press routine again with the rope pulls. And then I finished up with some sandbag squats as well as a sandbag carry. I'm telling you, the sandbag is the cure to life. The stiff leg one leg deadlift is an inner hamstring opener. And the goal is to learn how to hinge at the hip without any flexion or extension of the spine. 
pretty much most people do this wrong and the hips go backward and then the erectors end up taking over. And that's a sign that you need to build up strength in the glute major. Now I've been working on this, let's see, for about seven months and there's such a steep learning curve. I really struggle with it. Richard also said it took him a very long time to master it. So it's not something he would recommend a beginner start with. This was a fun workout. Every time Beyonce said halo, we did a sandbag squat. Now, we were purposely getting in our flow state, which is why you see us in internal torque throughout the full range of motion. We did not go into external torque from above parallel to the top, so that's why you don't see us locking out like you typically see people doing when they squat. Richard needs to get on a bodybuilding stage, write me out. So this was a phenomenal week of learning and I'm excited to continue being mentored by Richard and Julian. Strong Fit has changed my life and that's why I came to this course so that I could learn how to teach my Team SS how to do Strong Fit in the comfort of their own home. I get it. I like to work out at home too. So Right now, my goal is to adapt this for home workouts, so stay tuned for that. So here you see me with Natalie. She did the course with me. She's an occupational therapist. I have a degree in physiotherapy, so we hit it off. And uh, we both have similar issues. We have a similar hip shift going on and a similar issue with our shoulder. So we decided, okay, let's do the ultimate workout to target that, and of course it involve sandbags. I told you sandbags are the cure for life. So then we followed up with the front rack position sandbag squats. Why? Because when you're in the front rack position it forces you to engage your external obliques. If you don't engage your external obliques then you just collapse forward. Why is it relevant for me and Natalie to engage our external obliques? Well, because we have the hip shift problem. And if you engage your external obliques, poof, suddenly your hip shift gets cured. I told you, external obliques are the secret sauce. By the way, sandbag front squats are vile. Like, die, 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 die. Like, ça suffit, j'en ai le bol. So we grunted the entire time. Thanks for tuning in to this week's vlog. Make sure you subscribe or else or else dysfunctional Terry's major. <laughs>